Well, it looks like I managed to learn how to turn a mic on. Hello, uh, it's Brian Kelly on my fifth, uh, you know, uh, video. I did this same one last week, a whole hour. I thought it was perfect. Had the mic off again. Only this time, no groundhog came to the window to mock me, but it was rough. So I had to wait again for another week. And what we're doing here, now I'm going to switch to the tiny webcam because I just want to show that it is actually me. And the tiny webcam will take me over here to the screens that we're looking at. Here is our standard fair use. Uh, you know, you can steal mine, I can steal yours, as long as it's fair. But I don't think anything's on here that belongs to anybody. But I like this thing because it reminds me of the old days of blockbuster videos and uh, days gone by. So today I am here to practice my perfect... Uh, I, last week I had it memorized. This week I'm reading it off the web pages uh, and doing the best I can. Anyway, it's, it's only a practice. It may make it onto YouTube. At least that, that would be some progress. But uh, just to feel better about myself, I'm going to check the mic again. There it is. Look, see, that's how it's supposed to be. Can't believe I left that off. Anyway. Let's go back. Well, that's wrong. Let's go back to here. Yeah. All right. So we're through with the legalities and we're going to move on. What are we doing here? I am practicing a uh, presentation for this American Anti Gravity's Alternative Propulsion Engineering Conference. And, uh, you know, it should be about an hour. So last week I came in at one hour and two minutes with the sound off. Idiot. So we're going to try it again. And in worst case, we're going to get a YouTube video out of it. So where are we going here? Here we are pretending to be on APAC. I am going to start my presentation in reverse, because how does the APEC always end with Mark's first question, but how do I test this? Here's a prop right in front of the camera on the tiny camera, probably. I can't see it. That's tough getting used to. What that is, probably, probably giving you rotating glare. What that is, is a little box of graphene. There's a little box of graphene. It costs about, uh, you know, I don't know what it costs now, but it was like 140 bucks uh, a couple of years ago, whatever. You can buy it at airmail. It's a graphene, um, I guess they call it a flexible sponge or something. What is it? It's three and a half by one and a half inches. This is where we're going to start making anti gravity in air, huge air quotes, ironic face, whatever, because it's really not that. But it's called that, so we'll call it that in ironic quotes. And uh, we're going to make, we're going to start making wave guides out of that. You're going to say, well, that's not really that. Yes, it is. And uh, anyway, we'll get to that. And if I start arguing with myself, it's because I've been sitting on this for eight years. So uh, these are my thoughts uh, bouncing around. I realize it's not a normal discussion. So. How do I test this? Well, you take that graphene and you, this is what it looks like. We don't want to get our dirty fingerprints on it. In that box is this thing here. And we're going to take that. There's a close up. I like that. Nice texture on that. And you, uh, <clears throat> you soak it in hydrogen, which I cannot buy on the market because I'm just a regular person, but labs like Hawthorne Lab uh, can, and, and anyone at home who can do that, I, you know, I'm not recommending you mishandle hydrogen, violate any laws, do anything unsafe, but if you stick a battery, uh, you know, you can mess around, you can make your own hydrogen, is what I'm getting at. Uh, I haven't done it because... I came up with this when I was living in an apartment building and I don't want to set any fires. I'm sure it's in the least knowing anti-gravity devices. 
Uh, now I moved. I'm back in my parents' old place, and I'm not going to set my mom's old kitchen on fire with this stuff. I want it done around people that are a bit less klutzy than me. You know, I admit my limitations, and that's one of them. I can do some things, but the hydrogen, man, that just sounds like something. I don't know. I remember some something I did when I was a kid, and, you know, burn your eyebrows off type stuff. It was that, you know. I'm that kid. And here's just some more pictures of what that stuff looks like. So that's our, you know, that's our result here. That's what we're trying, you know, I'm going to babble a lot. Uh, but in the, in the end, I'm telling you that if you soak that stuff in, this is a little picture of it, um, the graphene and hydrogen, you get graphene. Which is a you get a hydrogen stuck on each carbon. Bing, 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 bing. It's perfect. You couldn't find a more perfect design. Anyway, to get started. Anyway, um, now what we do with that little sponge I have there, it'll be, you know, random. It'll half work maybe at best. So what do you do? You, you take that half <clears throat> arsed thing. And you wave Jeremiah's uh, magic wand around it. You take some of those um, fancy batteries those guys have, and you you know then you turn the heat on it. Then you flash a light at it. Then a fluorescent light. Then the laser. You screw around with it. That's you know science. That's part of it. Um, a big part of it. And it's gonna it's gonna jump. It's gonna fall off the table. You take it outside, set it in the sun. What's it gonna do? It's a lighter than air compound, a uh, uh, thing called graphene. Then you stick even lighter than lighter air in it, a uh, 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 thing on it, hydrogen, which we all know floats balloons and whatnot, because it's the perfect, it's where matter meets light. That's how you got to design these things. Think in reverse, if that makes sense. Uh, if light's moving at the speed of light, how do us objects of matter grab onto it? Well, we take some other matter that we can grab onto, because you can't grab light with anything that I know of, except other ma uh, matter. We're too big, anyway. So you grab onto this, this, you know, you build something around the moving light, is what I'm saying. Don't try to make mass move at the speed of light. Find something that's already moving at the speed of light and then grab it and use mass to do that. And this is our starting point right here. Anyway, uh, so that's what we're going to, you know, we're not going to make that. You have to need a real serious lab dedicated to this stuff. Clean rooms, you know, millions and millions of dollars. They can do it. They're doing it now. Uh, this thing here has full detail. Here's the Bible on that. This tweet here, you're never going to top that. Well, you know, not for a while. That's that's a nice uh, a report on everything you ever wanted to know about that stuff. And it's perfect for us to get started. And I'm just saying, let's, uh, you know, talk about how to make it. And, and if you do that, you will, you know, in historically be intentionally the first people, entities, humans, I guess, to do this, you know, you might have much probably been done by accident, maybe. But you're going out there and you're starting to do that. And, you know, all, all it will do is, you know, the, the technology, you know, the engineering behind it, all that stuff has to be done, you know, methodically. We know all that. You're not going <clears> to <throat> just start making, you know, uh perfect objects they're going to be random they're going to be stuck on the roof they're going to be lost because you put it in the sun and it's up floating floating by a helicopter somewhere and you know it's the same you know, i'm talking about he heavier than air stuff that floats like graphene uh you know you say well you can't you know, how do you know that works where's my equations and uh, i'm nervous well look out the window this is heavier than air, this water molecules. You know that because you see liquid water on the ground and frozen water on the ground. 
Well, how does it get up there? It's the same molecule. It didn't magically change. Well, that's steam. That's different. That's, that's a different phase. Well, why is it a different phase? And look what the different phase does. And then add that up and you say, well, it's got more light going through it. It's got radiation. It's got the heat. It's got the ultraviolet. If you've ever seen snow sublimate, it doesn't melt. It just, it's gone. That's, that's fun. Anyway, so we're going to take that practice. This, we don't need a, we don't need a fancy, uh, prototype to take to Silicon Valley for them to stare at with their jaws open. We have archetypes or archetypes. <clears throat> we have this. We already have our predecessor, uh, anti-gravity guys, these guys. And there were people before him that visualized it. Um, airships, you know, just, just from, uh, just from thinking about it, that if you could capture these lighter than air gases or this stuff here, that's just regular air. Why, you know, why is the regular air floating this thing? It's because this fire here and this, this visible light coming down from the sun are passing through those plain old dull and boring nitrogen and whatever else is in there, some oxygen, some water molecules in there and causing them to, <clears throat> quote, lift. That's what you're, that's what you're doing. That's, that's a common name for what kind of what we're talking about. Lift. Maybe I should have jumped on that sooner, but that's what, you know, that's what it, that's what it's called. But people to date, in my opinion, and this is where I have to pat myself on the back, have not looked into what's the lower order cause. What's the final cause of the cause that we can break it down further than just saying, well, it's pressure, it's buoyancy. Yeah, yeah, we know that. We know that part. Why is it that? This is why. The light and the radiation and the heat, etc. So we're going to capture that. We're going to take advantage of that and we're going to chase Tic Tacs around. But this stuff here, you're like, well, that's a balloon. That's being pushed up by... No, that's anti-gravity plastic with a string on it. That stuff always more than air. If you put the magic uh, ingredient in it that pumps light, again, pumps light, light being heat, all, all, the whole full spectrum, whatever it's capable of, that'll pump the right light in that spectrum to lift that heavier than air plastic uh, and string off the face of the earth. Oh, I raise, I close. Do not close that. Alrighty then. So we're back to these guys, our predecessors. All I did was dig down a little deeper than these guys and have my eyeballs roll back on my head a few times. And then here's another uh, archetype. Well, you know, that's again, that's just density. Well, what if you optimize it? What if you take every atom in there and embed it in the, the gas atom in there, embed it in the skin, make it controllable so you can pull the light in this way and push it out that way and do it for every single uh, spot on that, on the skin, down to the angstrom size. Well, that's what these guys in these flying Tic Tacs and gimbals, that's what they, I think they are doing. And we can start to do. So that's why I'm talking to myself in a room. So what am I talking about now? I am, uh, yeah, so we want to, we want to image, we want to do this. We see this now. We have our, our archetype clouds, balloons. Then all of a sudden here, a couple of years uh, later, we're seeing these on the news. Now I was interested in the UFOs and all that, you know, more than most people, I knew, you know, I knew about the, you know, it's, but I'll, let me put it to you this way. The Red Chariots of the Gods when I was, when it came out in paperback, you know, in the 70s, whatever. And followed all that stuff, you know, off and on, on TV, Unsolved Mysteries, whatever it is. Uh, the, uh, uh, oh man, how do you forget that? Rendlesham thing, Bob Lazar stories. Wow, is that true? Uh, you know, what else? Up through, 
up through around the time I started actually getting interested in physics again, um, I got <laughs> quit watching that stuff because it got into the crystal skulls and it got too got too esoteric. Anyway, so these things come out. Wow, this is on the news. I'm like, gee, I've been sitting here for a couple of years now trying to think of a way to tell people, you know, that I think I might know what, quote, anti-gravity, unquote, is, maybe, you know, kind of, uh, I'm not shy about it, but there's no opening for it, you know. And I couldn't find all you guys on Twitter yet or, you know, now, now, now the time, now it's things are converging. Uh, anyway, so, so here we are, here we're moving in to the time when the Tic Tacs and all this, this stuff became, you know, on television, New York Times, you guys all know that. So I started, um, conforming what I had been thinking to what they are actually seeing. And, you know, this is, you know, we're, we're all assuming that's true. This is true, most of us here. I mean, you know, we've got some great evidence. Um, I'm not here to convince you, you know, there's, I'm sure there's a couple skeptics, whatever. It doesn't even, to me, it doesn't matter if it's true, because it could be true, and I can tell you how, and um, we can do it. And so I started making these little things to, to see if I could, spread my uh, thoughts on this and so we may as well take a moment to go over it because I'm sure I've spammed every one of you on Twitter you've seen this I think this is the most widely viewed one and it's uh, it's got a bubble on it so that's good let's go with it tech tech UFO propulsion upon information belief rumors gossip rank hearsay and speculation there's some lawyer stuff in there and it's I don't know for sure, you know, this is just, um, it wasn't even my best guess. I just saw something that already fit my notions. So I put 10 steps on there and let's see if they're digestible. Number one, ambient cold light absorbed, pulled from air or space itself. Well, that's what they're seeing apparently on these non-signature signatures. And I'm looking at that. I'm like, well, yeah, okay. That makes, that's the what it should. That's how it works. That's that's what you'll see whether it be a balloon or a cloud. It's the local ambient air. It might heat up or chill down a little bit from going through the thing, whatever it's going through. And um, you know, but it's roughly the same. You're not going to create big heat uh, things and you know, unnecessary radiation. Uh, so that's what you would expect. Number two, highly absorbent yet photoluminescent skin to absorb and emit light, for example, fancy black for in, graphene for out, black patches mentioned. In other words, if there's, if the thing's, you know, glistening white and then you're seeing black patches on it or black pieces or whatever, that kind of fits with the absorbing and emitting. Um, we have materials that can do that now, is what I'm saying with the band of black and graphene. You don't have to stick with that forever, but it's a good way to get started. Number three, light wave guided through and around skin with metagraphene, band of black or similar. In other words, it's also got a wave guide in it. So you pull it in, you push it around, and you pump it out. You know, how many different ways can you do that? Many different ways. Uh, but going to need a lot of engineering, a lot of, you know, figuring out that uh, automatic transmission on that thing. Hmm, you know. So there's a lot of challenges there. All I'm trying to do here is get the general principle out. And it's about time, you know, get it through. It's time to get it through some, some more and more skulls on a daily basis, if I can. Because I'm going to devote... Probably, you know, quite a bit of energy and time, if not the rest of my life, to doing this. Um, I can do it now, so I'm going to. But I can't, I can't do it yet now. You know what I mean? I just find time to do this now. This week was. It has to be done. You have to force it, and you have to get it into your uh, routine. Light uh, number four: 
could be pumped around or right back in as needed, cell by cell. Yeah, well, you're going to have different designs and different crafts, etc., different uses. Five, light mass equivalents emitted through skin with reported antenna for steering bubble shaping. I don't know what those are. I think they might be for shaping the bubble. You stretch it one way, you go that way. You stretch it the other way, you go that way. But it also depends on which way the planet's spinning around the sun, which is also spinning, which is also spinning, spinning, spinning. So you're going to need some fancy uh, GPS computers on that thing to not smash yourself right into the ocean all the time. But we'll get to that later, and that's not even my department. <clears throat> I'm just doing, I'm doing this stuff. Light, mass equivalents. I already read this, but I'm reading that part again for you physicists out there who need to hear it again. That when it comes out, it's like thrust, which you love so much. And we all, you know, that's how you learn it. I, so did I. And um, I couldn't think about this stuff without it for a long time. So I understand uh, how you're saying this is ridiculous. It's puffy air, there's nothing to it, it's light, it's, it's, there's nothing to it, I, you know, there is something to it, it's mass equivalence, we don't completely understand it, you're not going to find a, a good number for the uh, mass of a photon, you know, um, you're not going to find, you're not going to find that anyone theorized, even at, at least I could not and did not. I should say did not find. Uh, what if you took just a pure area of light and stuck it in air or water? What would that be like? I, you know, who would think of something like that? I, you know, I kind of came about it by accident. A long, you know, ah, it's a long, weird, twisted story. But I think that's what we're dealing with here. And I think it's very doable. And if you, that skin of that thing is covered with that, what I want it to be or think it could be, let alone what it actually is way improved, then you could do that. And you get these results. Number six, craft mass is offset by overwhelming loss of mass equivalence. Well, that's, that's for you old school physicists and engineers. And I try to learn it that way too. And I was like, this does not make sense. Where is the thrust? Well, it's there. And also the thing, the bubble you're in is if there's no air there, that air is not being affected by gravity or inertia, which we'll get to later. It's that mass is wrapped in a thing that is not affected by gravity and or inertia the same way mass is. So if you get enough there and you're pushing it around, all of a sudden you're in a giant photon. There are a little piece of mass that got stuck in a giant photon that's important, that does not care less about gravity or inertia, maybe just a little tiny bit, especially since you're stuck in it. But it, it's, it's, it's a different mode of transportation, I guess, to put it mildly. Number seven, radiation pressure emissions might feel like a force field used for bumper car defense and could bubble wrap or move objects. Well, I think that that got on there because, you know, when this uh, unidentified television show came out, thank you for identifying the five observables, folks. And um, they were also talking about, well, this guy got moved from across the Bermuda Triangle and Time shifted. Now, time didn't shift. You got caught in the wake of one of these things, and your two-hour trip suddenly took five minutes. That's what happened. And my, that's what I, you know, that's why that number seven is on there. I have no idea what happened. Mass of craft is barely affected by gravity, if at all. G force is mitigated. Now that's all over the observables list about. Well, no biological entity could survive. I guarantee you, it's surviving. It's a tray of martinis that does not spill if the thing flips over going 16,000 miles an hour, which is heavily riding the clutch and brake and not good for it. And, uh, you know, don't worry about that. 
That's not you, Dana. It's nice. Thank you for your concern. Air never touches craft. Inertia mitigated. Yeah, it's just like this little guy and his balloon in his car. We'll, we'll get. We'll catch up to him. I guess I should. I, we'll get back to him. Uh, uh, of why, you know, yes, great. To, to me, and this is theoretical, this is controversial. Yeah, I tend to believe in quantum gravity, the graviton, the Planck length size of it. And I think that if you go, you're going through up and down, so to speak, compared to how it's aligned, it depends on how the graviton's aligned. If you're going this way, it's gravity. Pull and push, if you're coming this way, you're going to have to go through me sideways, which means you you need a little boost of yourself to get in motion. Then you stay in motion. Then you run out of motion when you're out of the the, uh, the graviton. It's, uh, you know, so those three laws of, you know, I don't, I don't remember them right now, but those are all easily... Explained by a simple spin two particle, which is what they think the graviton in is, if it exists. Um, and to me, it's all adds up. It adds up to me. Inertia, smersha to me. Ten, gravity is effectively in a propelling bubble of light. Well, that's the summary level of it. Uh, kind of. Gives you a little Newtonian nod there and the propelling because it's spinning. It is, it is pushing something, but it's using light to do it. And because it's in the bubble, the mass within it is, isn't affected by gravity as much because that general area isn't affected. It's like outer space. It doesn't take much to move there. Well, this is a little outer space to go. Yeah, that might be a good name, good name for it for. For the bubble, uh, I didn't think of that before. Like, what if you pulled a chunk of space down into the, into the atmosphere? Would there be gravity there? Mm, I don't know. I say no, because I say this, for one thing, this shows it, and so do the clouds, so do the balloons, etc. Are you physicists? Tisk tisk. I can hear you naysaying me, but you don't have an equation that comes close to this stuff. And you never thought of the problem, which I can't blame you for. It takes a tin foil hat to, to do some of this stuff, which is the Godards and the Montgolfiers and the Wright brothers and such. Those guys were not did not have equations. Anyway, do I sound offensive? I am. Okay, let's move on to what? Oh, here's our friend here that does not care about inertia or gravity. The little red luff balloon. And this is taken, I, I have this little gif. It's, uh, it, 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 it's on my, one of my web pages and it's, uh, this guy, uh, ha, allows people to use it. It's from a gift from a YouTube channel is what it is. And it's all sourced on my web page. <clears throat> who that who that who that guy is? You know, he's Mr. Science Dad or somebody. But you can see that. And we, you know, I mess around. I, I don't do it so much anymore. But when I start doing this, I was playing with balloons and mirrors. You wait till the balloon gets half out of gas. It's only halfway floating. It's not stuck to the roof. You wait for a sunny day in Georgia, which we got a lot. Sun comes right in perfectly. You bounce it off the mirror onto the half. Uh, you know, the, the, the sagging balloon suddenly shoots up, hits the roof. You, you, you take the mirror and you twist it so the beam, you can push the balloon around from room to room. I did a million times, but to do that, I had to go to the Dollar Tree, buy balloons, and if you like, leave them loose, they'll do what they're doing in this car. So you have to, you have to, uh, you have to have a technique to secure those things. But, but I love this thing because it shows it, sh it shows what's happening with the Tic Tacs. Huh? What about the G-forces? That's like saying, what about the G-forces when you're, you know, it's time to get up on the plane, you know, uh, unfasten your safety belt and walk around. But you're going 400 miles an hour. 300. 
Yeah, you have G-forces. Well, yeah, if you hit a brick wall, but you're not going to. Anyway. Oh, off topic. Gimbal. Oh, okay. So the same thing goes for the tick, for the gimbal as the tic tac. And here's a little tweet. Uh, you know, for some reason I got to thinking that these are more for deep space than the tic tac. And then right around the time I was making this, the terahertz waveguide became a popular thing amongst us here in this little group. So I'm thinking, um, I, don't, I don't know, for some reason I was thinking, I, I got to thinking, well, these, these things probably used, if they're for space, more than Earth, then they're going to have, uh, they're going to pump terahertz. Well, where'd you come up with that idea, Kelly? Well, I had it for years, except I was calling it uh, cosmic microwave background radiation, which is in and around terahertz. Terahertz, one terahertz is minus 375 Fahrenheit. Most of space is like 400. I think it calls it gets us minus 460 degrees. There's no suns and planets around. You know, a lot of people know way more about it than I do, but if you're in a terahertz range, which is that thing is, then that's what you're going to be using. Um, you know, that, that will, that will, f should float. It's like a, a balloon. It's like a helium being in the visible heat range that we have here on Earth. So it floats if you put it in a thing. Uh, in a, uh, you know, piece of plastic mylar. So somehow, yeah, here, so here I am back years ago before I, you know, I remember putting this on, a, on Twitter thinking these people are going to think I'm crazy. And I really didn't have, I only, I didn't know anybody yet who was interested in this. So I'd stick it on that space.com tweet or something like that. And I, you know, I have websites. People look for anti-gravity and they find these things. So this is an early drawing of mine and it has the, uh, the, uh, CMB on there, cosmic microwave background, which is space. Because when I'm thinking about this at first, I'm like, well, the balloon's pumping this light and this wavelength and that. But out in space, there's nothing there but space. And, you know, space is cold. Well, yeah, well, it's cold for a reason. It's not empty vacuum. It's cold because it's stuffed with cold light, which is known as roughly terahertz wavelength also known as the cosmic microwave background left over from the Big Bang. And that's, uh, so it makes sense. That's what you're going through. You're in the ocean. You're in an ocean. You're not on it, so you're not sailing. You're in it like a sailboat, like this. Or you're in it like a submarine, like this pump jet uh, submarine, which is the high end. And um, so you want to, you just want to imitate that. It's, which is imitating a squid or something. So, um, yeah, if you dumb it down and simplify it and then ask one more time, what's the cause of this and that? Uh, you start, start seeing that, yeah, that's entirely possible. And then you start seeing this stuff or hearing about it on TV. This is a, uh, you know, moving away from the gimbal and the space and the terahertz. We're going to get into these a little bit. And it's funny that we're talking about this stuff like we know it exists, but I'm saying this could exist. So if you're seeing it, it could exist. So we have our, our light bubble here. And it's just like the one around the uh, Tic Tac because the light goes through water. It's, you know, it's, I imagine they think it's harder. It's just a different part of the atmosphere. And that different part still has heat in it. Even though it's very cold heat at the bottom of the ocean, not quite terahertz cold, but cold. Anyway, there's heat in there. There's visible light. Um, so they could move around on that. And that's a thing, eye catcher thing I made with, with a similar, uh, you know, list of 10 items, except uh, I had the hydrophobic, uh, aspect, which you figure, you know, you might as well put, if you're going, know you're going in water, you might as well have that. But boy, when it can be convenient, 
if something just pulled the light we needed and was hydrophobic. You gotta start thinking like the little green men, folks. And we do have that. This Vanta Black that I was talking about, that absorbs 90-something percent, 99.8 percent of light, visible light, and a lot of other stuff. So we could use that, you know, we cover our, our, our triangle with that, but also, wow, look at this side bonus. You don't even have to pay extra for this. Boom, you put it in the water, it won't touch water. It's already got a bubble around it. Does that make things easier? Is that an air bubble right there, or is that uh, just light? I don't even know that. I should know that. It doesn't matter much, though, because if it's air, then we have, uh, you know, we're using the same stuff we used in air, which we're already used to. I, I just think this is like a off-road model. I don't know. It's probably a little more complex. But as you can see, this is what, this is a human dumb, human shaved ape has now. So I'm saying, let's get, get off the stick here and start looking at this stuff with, uh, with an eye toward, you know, if you think this is real, some of you people probably maybe even saw this thing or saw pictures and films. Then, uh, you know, let's try to get serious. All right, so where'd you come up with all this stuff, Kelly? This is, huh? All right, well, you know, this, 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 this tells, this is a Twitter, uh, uh, collection of tweets called A Moment. If you follow me, which I suggest you should or would if you're interested, um, it's on, it's on the YouTube page, a bunch of links. Anyway, that kind of tells the story of it. And I have web pages and then hidden web pages and footnotes and hundreds of pounds of scientific documents, uh, you know, papers printed out at Georgia Tech. It took me years to figure this stuff because I had to teach myself this stuff over again and relearn a bunch of stuff. I'm 63 years old and I worked, at, I was an engineer for a while. I worked in some highly technical stuff, nuclear plants and stuff, things like that that are way ahead of the, even steel mills and uh, fiberglass, fancy factories, whatever. Uh, but I had to reteach myself this. And, you know, I, I got into it. I went out and started buying textbooks and reading them cover to cover. It, took, it was brutal. But I, I knew I was on to something. So <clears throat> but that personal stuff, that can last. We can wait for Oprah or whatever. Not Oprah, something like that. But. All right, so let's, uh, where did you do that? All right, so I started putting these, having these ideas, and so I'll spread them, I'll put them out there and see what, I don't know what to do. I'll, I'll call it a startup, don't get laughed at. And uh, so the, the ideas developed, you know, uh, this is right before the Tic Tac came out. For some reason, I thought of a Tic Tac. No, I don't believe in that synchronicity stuff too much. I didn't think of a Tic Tac. I, I, I saw this. Uh, it's a drawing of a water bottle or a soda bottle with a bunch of little panels on it. Because I'm thinking, pan. I need something with panels on it. And, uh, you know, it was from a free image site of architectural drawing ads or something. And this, what does this show you? This shows you, this is the, this is the little Tic Tac. There's the sun. There's the earth. It's whipping by there. It's pulling in that light through that skin and pumping it out the back. And it's approaching the speed of light, maybe. Uh, but it's anti-gravity in quotes. It's pumping light through contained mass. That's all we're doing. And it's propellantless. And this suggested thing is made out of carbon nanotubes with absorbed hydrogen before I knew what graphene was. And so, you know, it blows it out. It blows out the pieces of it down to the basic hydrogen atom. And you're never going to win an argument saying, well, hydrogen, well, you know, I take that back. I'm now I'm arguing myself again. That's a very efficient piece of mass to pump light. 
That light's out there. It's free. Grab onto it. Ride onto it. How do I grab onto it? It's like seeing a railroad, electrified railroad track, not having a, uh, a railroad car. Well, car. You know, build one. This is what I'm saying here. And this, uh, this is just a, a graphene and it's related. I mean, it, it's a miracle product, whatever it is. You know, I started following it when it first came out. Uh, I just happened to be job hunting and I was thinking of getting back into nuclear and realized how out of date I was on technical stuff. And it looked very interesting. And I was interested in materials in engineering school. I was not the sharpest engineering student. Uh, due to a lot of partying and punk rocking, uh, and that related stuff. Uh, but, but I knew some things I liked. And so that was one of the materials. And so was when they got to the end of the physics class you had to take, I'm like, come on, it's finally getting interested, interesting here. And, uh, well, class is over. That's all you need to know for this stuff. I'm like, come on, I can, you know, they finish out with the hardest part of, uh, all oh, these questions that aren't solved today, the collapsing wave functions and all that stuff. And, you know, it starts getting into the esoteric uh, metaphysics and et cetera. Anyway, but I was a lawyer for years, too, and I forgot all this stuff pretty much. You know, I worked on construction cases, but I wasn't digging into the details of, you know, like I used to. So. And what's a piece of this thing here? This is a, this just shows you how to pull light in from space. There's a uh, CMB. You want to figure out a way to make that go through hydrogen or something like hydrogen. I mean, you're going to have to do a lot of adjustments and engineering and that, that, that. And you might use, you know, then you're going to move on to different materials for different reasons. But this is a good place to start because we see it working in these airships. We see it working in these clouds. Uh, you're not going to get these words mixed up. Falsify and, un and falsifiable, blah, blah, those things that you can, any idiot can see. Anyway, so... I come up with this thing, a blue hydrogen light pump channel, realize it's you know, Eureka, it's pumping space like a submarine does. Okay, that's what this represents. And, you know, here's a couple of little selling points. Einsteinian, changes mass in a gravitational field. Okay, <clears throat> that sounds like it may, might make sense. Newtonian, propelled by radiation pressure. Yeah, you can look at it as force, momentum, and or just changing mass in the gravitational field. Um, it's propellantless, fuel pump, but not stored. Now that's a wrong, fuel is the wrong word there. It should be medium. But I left, usually I go back and fix some mistakes like that, but I just, just decided to leave this one just for the sake of honesty and transparency. Oh, okay. Anti-gravity in quote, transparent to gravity, because that's kind of how I thought of it. I'm like, originally I'm like, Okay, gravity's a wave or something. I saw this on TV on a science channel. So if it's a wave like light waves, and a wave goes right through glass like light waves, this is early days before I read photonics books and got totally into this stuff, then we'd want the gravity to go right through us and not see us instead of hit us and push us. So I thought it would be called gravity transparency, but... I think anti-gravity in quotes is better. Anyway, so coincidentally, <clears throat> like with the Tic Tac thing, a few months after I started posting this somewhere, I don't know, you know, space.com, whatever it was, physics, you know, no one's looking at it because the UFOs aren't out yet. Probably. And, um, or at least they didn't catch on. So this thing comes out. I'm following all the space stuff, because if Elton, Elton John, Elon Musk can teach himself rocket science out of a book, then I can do it. And I tried. I think he learned better, probably. But I got the general principle. You know, we had to take that in uh, engineering school. We had to know the rocket equation, which I wonder if I passed that test. But uh, anyway, 
Uh, so I see the space agency, European Space Agency, ESA. They come out with this air breather. I'm like, that reminds me of the thing I did a couple of weeks ago. So what the hell? I'll call it the light breather because I'm, you know, flailing around for names. Gravity, transparency, quote unquote, anti-gravity, whatever. So I just thought that was pretty cool, you know. Every time they post this thing, this goes right under it. Because it's coming, it's, to, to me, you know, I don't see the future. I have no superpowers, but come on. I'm going to check my volume for a second here. Yes, it's still on. Yes, there's a chance this might be able to go up on YouTube. So we're done with this. That's just a little history of it. Oh, all right. So I wrote, I'm trying to get the idea out there with these these images, okay? So well, I better write a big, long narrative. You know, I'm not an academic. You know, I don't know about paper publishing them. I'll read them, but half of them are crap anyway, um, as is that entire institution. Sorry. Um, so I just, like, wrote this. Just wrote it up. I'm going to gather my own thoughts about what is this. So it's a... Uh, this was a couple years, or 17, May 17. So that's almost, that's four years now. I'm going to try to get some uh, content going on this and wrote a, a, uh, a large, thoughtful web page on it. And it spells, I, you know, I kind of, I like it still, but it's not for everybody. But I think uh, if you find this at all interesting, you should read this. And it, t it tells the story of why I'm right. How about that? Uh, look, there's some pictures of some turtles I put in there, you know. Uh, but, but, but with this highly technical crowd, I'm going to take you down to here. Because this looks like what you guys like. And that is... Uh, well, the bottom line. What's the bottom line here? Well, we're going to start making these things, starships, whatever you want to call them. Crashing flying saucers for the first five years. Believe me, a lot of damage. Anyway, so what do we, you know, we wanted thrust in the old days. And now we want this here. Well... All right, that's on other pages, but it's this is the photon mass attenuation coefficient flow chart, flow chart, which tells us what's the best thing to move light through mass, because that's what we're going to be doing for a long time until you warp guys can come up with some metamaterial, which uh, that'll be a while. So all, it's, all this does is, is say... This, some things move light through them better than others. Like, here's hydrogen in blue and here's uranium there, whatever it is, you know, you know solid rock. Um, and this describes why graphene is the best. And it, it, there's links there, the best to start with. And here's gra graphene, cute little drawing. And there's a graphene. It's white going out and black coming in. And here's some stuff here. It shows wild curves proving something. Well, it proves how fast the light goes in and out. That's what you want. In and out and on a lightweight thing that you can sit in and drive. You know, that's all it is. How big of an engine? Can I put this jet engine on my Honda Civic? You're doing the same thing here, only you're putting a pump and it pumps light instead of exploding it in a, from a stored thing. Uh, tank. So, yeah, this is a long, thoughtful piece. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, I like it, but it's a long read. But there are, there's a link right at the top. Go right to the answer. Bing. Hit that. And that, that starts telling you, you know, gets to the point for the advanced class, which I consider you guys. So this, um, that's the end of that part. Now I go to this thing here. And oh, this just this is just more history, just telling you, you know, sh to show you that right or wrong, I've been working on it and thinking about it for quite some time. 
here's here's some you know drawings and documentations goes back to uh, 12 the year 12 2012 start thinking about this stuff you know you start thinking about just well here's the first here's the first uh, light bubble right there in 2012 anyway or my ear all right so you know going back going back looking at the clouds with the sun on them so this hydrogen this water was on the ground then it was rain then it was up there how did that happen and you start figuring it out did it have an escape velocity of seven meters per second no it just goes up slowly i mean it took years to figure something was, go from that question to no it takes its good old time it doesn't have to blast off to go to orbit i mean this water won't go to orbit but um it's, the point is the point and it's right uh sketches whatever is that what gravity looks like to a hydrogen atom i don't know maybe uh there is something you know hydrogen splitting apart uh, there's the first uh space pumper with a cmbr going through how do you, how would you make that go through mass well like this and once in a while i put on my engineer hat and be like i gotta put some numbers on this thing or else it won't look like anything so i started figuring out okay these wavelengths go through this thing this is a whispering gallery resonator i think which is an optical device there's going to be a million different ways to slice this atom and um uh, you know that was kicking around that idea this is oh yeah if you're holding your um hydrogen in you know some container i, I didn't know about metamaterials yet or how it would go with uh with uh, um storage i called it back then until i figured out what it was and then uh well yeah you, you hit the thing with when you have your, your graphene metamaterial and you want to make a left, you throw a, a, an electron down, you know, down to a certain cell, bunch of cells. It kicks up the uh, hydrogen a little bit or cools it off, up or down, you know, one or the other. But it, that's the control system, you know, which you have. And light will go right through. You can use light to control light. That's on the first page of this huge photonic handbook i painstakingly read the first big lesson is light controls light and i'll tell you it took me three weeks to read the first two sentences in that book anyway so that's just all well, that is is like why does this guy think he knows about light and uh, metamaterials well i've been looking at it a long time in depth uh, though not formally educated, nor did I work in this stuff. This is, these are new fields now. Young people now don't know this stuff. You have to be a graduate student focusing in on, oh, here's a prop. Here's a prop. Let me change this thing to hold up the prop I went and got just for this purpose. Where is it? Big webcam. Biggest webcam. What's the biggest one? Me only. Me only. There's a prop right there. This just came out. All you younger people or people that want to get into this, start here because you will have a head start on me when I started. And, um, yes, that doesn't get any better than this, folks. That's what I was writing goofy web pages about, to combine those two. Now, there's nothing in here about, I didn't read it yet, I just got it. There's no, but there's nothing in the table of, of contents about gravity. They didn't get to that part yet. But I'm telling you, that's coming. If that's your burning cigar going through time, here I am. Okay, let's go back to tiny webcam and the page. So, we were on on this page so here we are looking at all these drawing early drawings this is how this is how you convert light through hydrogen using these optic mechanics down through these wavelengths you pull it in there and you blow it out the bottom 
and it's going to be pink light, and it's going to be anywhere from, according to this, four to 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, I'm a little rough on some of the details here, but that's, you know, that's roughly, all right, if it's four to 5,000 Fahrenheit, then we can set the thing on ambient wherever you go, unless you want to burn some uh, Brazilians, and that's not funny, I know that, but um, you just leave it on ambient. Um, but maybe you could use it as a, the skin of your craft as a weapon. I bet you could. And I'll tell you what, with all these threat narratives and whatnot, if, I am of the opinion that if a Tic Tac felt like it, it could flash so bright it would burn your eyeballs out. And I know that's not funny. Um, because we know these uh, pilots from, from, uh, you know, media, UFO, Twitter, and all that. And no one would want to, you know, I'm just saying. People wonder, like, why do they even have lights? Well, yeah, I know. As far as I'm concerned, they have lights because I thought of it. But that's no answer. But, well, they, yeah, you wouldn't see them if they were interacting at plank lanes at, like, warps. Or space-time metric types, they're not. You're not going to see that, in my opinion, unless they want you to see it. Which I don't. Uh, I just see that here as showing up as. Well, the signatures verify what I'm thinking, so I can't. I admit it. I'm a hammer. That's a nail on that topic. So forget about it. Let's move on. More drawings. More drawings. Blah 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 blah. blah uh, early uh, little cartoons for myself. There's a thing. Those have never been on the web that I know. Uh, no, I might have put them up once, but instead of metamaterials, I'm thinking, yeah, these are glass. Um, what are they call whispering? This is a whispering gallery here. There's a name for these discs. You stack the discs, or you maybe even make a little tube like this. You know, if you could, a little funnel. And then there's your control system. Like, okay, I want to go left, right, left. Well, that means you got to juice that, unjuice this, and hit this one or whatever it is. And you've got a, a trapped um, light in there signaling the other light. There's probably an electron in there somewhere. I'm sure there is. Oh, uh, yeah, here I say, well, you can use also uh, electric magnetic to control this. Hydrogen bouncing around in here. It's going through different states. Oh, it's either resonant there or it's flowing here. I haven't looked at this in years. This is from 2014. Anyway, let's not get stuck on this. And let's keep going. That's just some stuff for the website and these little sketches. That, 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 uh, that's hydrogen. That's, uh, Drawings, drawing, you know, all right. <clears throat> I don't want to waste your time looking at everything on here. But one more little taste of something I want to show you. I forget how far. Oh, no, I have to go all the way back here. I'm sorry, folks. Uh, yeah, beyond that web page, I have a couple of web pages. They're for, written for different pages. Uh, Purposes. There's for at least three image pages. There's that big long write up. There's a write up for Silicon Valley investors telling them what hot stuff this is. Back when I thought my only angle was a startup, you know. Uh, and it might still, be, you know, someday they'll wake up. Anyway, oh, this goes. But this is the hidden web pages, which is nothing more than a boring compilation of all the work I did. And there's a there's a long list of footnotes. That's probably 300 footnotes. Yeah, what was that? Oh, these are the sketches with the original hidden web page, which you already saw that stuff. I mean, there's nothing secret on here. Uh, it's just, um, you know, as a lawyer, you want to hold back some of your intellectual property. Plus, you want to prove you did it. Some days, you know, someone's going to say, no, uh, you know, Skunk Works thought of that in 2011. Well, no, they didn't. Unless they did it behind uh, closed doors, well, whatever. 
Uh, so that's the paranoid uh, lawyer. I uh, used to manage litigation a lot and claims and fights, and that's all you do. And you try to settle them, of course. But once in a while, you got to go to the mat and send people to the Supreme Court, to the even of the United States I went to. And anyway, forget that. So we're done there with that part. Now, so then what happened? I tried to start, I started making more and more of these little memes, little pictures, little drawings. Get it out there. Get it out of my system, too, because this stuff is, it, it'll, it'll, you know, burn on your uh, creativity or whatnot. So here's a little poem about it. It's not a poem, but it's a little story. And when I go back and look at it, you know, at the time, I'm like, this is insane. Can hydrogen be made to pull 3K CMB through itself? Uh, I asked myself, and a thing that two people read until recently. Um, and that's your high, that's your, that's your terahertz waveguide. So I see that coming on TV. I'm like, hey, what, huh? Wait a minute. And these are all old drawings. I try to get rankings on Google. People look up anti-gravity. They're going to see this brilliance. And, uh, going back there, yeah, some of it's eye catching. Some of it's, uh, heavy information. These are goofy cartoons. This is, uh, you know, Newton, Newton. Hey, Newton, what if your apple was full of moving light? Now, this stuff's before his time. He wasn't even around to see a balloon. So and then you get Einstein, and he's saying, that's, that's mass changing in a gravitational field. That's mass equivalence. So, you know, goofy stuff like that, just to get rid of it. There's another little story. Little drawings, some look cool. Then the, uh, what do you call it, the UFOs start coming out. And all kinds of, you know, you know, I'll do nothing and then I'll go for a while. This is the first one that came out. Because we're not going over all those drawings. There's 60 of them. I'll do that on YouTube later. But this one, to this day, I don't, you know, this is the first one I had the guts to make and put out on the web. I put it on a startup website. And... Um, on Twitter, and it, to this, you know, I'm like, how can I boil this? Down? What do I really mean? You know, you're these startup people are like, get it out there in one simple, mindless, you know. So what, what's what it boils down to is light pumped through matter reduces the effect of gravity. All right, there's an example there, hydrogen. Okay, if it's frozen, it's not going anywhere. You hit it with a little heat, it becomes liquid. And moves around a little bit, it's, you know, the inertia is gone from it, so to speak. It's got some flexibility. And um, if you, you know, it'll roll, you know, so to speak. But if you keep hitting it and hitting it, well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fly off the face of the earth because it's getting hit by giant photons. Those little photons look little compared to that. In reality, they're 600 times, or is it 6,000? Sorry. I, one or the other. Bigger than that. They come in, they envelop the thing, they wrap around the thing, they put it in a bubble of area that is not bothered by gravity and or uh, inertia. They give it some momentum, they give it a kick momentum, kick, whatever you call that, and uh, inertial mass, I think, they, you know, and then it moves on, and that's why, uh, you know, if it stays in there, you can keep it until you feel like exploding it. Anyway, and that's how it works in the clouds, because the clouds are a lot of hydrogen in those clouds. That's how it works in the hydrocarbons and the rockets and the mixing, the stuff to get the light out of it, combination, I think it's called, in the rockets. And um, suddenly you have an object with a lot of moving light through it. Well, no, that's just to cause the explosion. That's That's for the thrust. Well, how much... Are you sure which causes which and which is more effective? It's one. It's a different way of looking at it, and we're not going to argue that here. We'll have that argument later. Uh, so I kept on going and got, you know going through those UFO things. I got UFO uh, uh, stuff. Uh, where, where's that thing? Uh, that's not it. Um, you know, the pages. Where are the pages? Well, 
I got these, I got them in, you know, animated GIFs and, you know, and all kinds of stuff on there, but whoa, I lost my train of thought, damn, I'm still talking. Oh, so I get all the way to the point from this simple statement here, which I believe is falsifiable, but unfalsified, uh, and even if it is, it's still going to work 99.99% of the time. It's going to fly a giant triangle, this principle, in my opinion. And I aim to make that happen. So, so we go from those drawings all the way to this crazy stuff, which is after thinking about it for years and years and years, and then finally learning you know, quantum gravity. I didn't know that stuff in the beginning. Now I'm up on that, and I'm following that daily, and I'm learning everything, I'm reading everything I can about this, and we're down to the Planck length universe of a spin-2 graviton. Now, how could that possibly create, or, and that's not the right word, manifest gravity in inertia? Well, the only way I could figure it out is to try to pretend I'm a little person here, and I'm dealing with a spin-2 particle, and that's kind of what it looks like. What does it look like? It looks like the funhouse at Westview Park or where Kennywood or whatever. And who doesn't love uh, those places? Anyway, so, so now I'm back to seriously thinking about it, and I'm like saying, okay, well, there's the gravity, because it's this central thing here in the spin-2 particle, this torus of the vortex or whatever, is pulling this guy down. He's walking. He paid his money. He walks in. He can't move. You call this a ride? Okay, so it's he stopped. The gravity's pulling at him. Now, if he was down here, he'd be pushed, too. And that's a shout-out to my friend on Twitter who uh, kind of he's big on that. And he knows who he is. And I should have, and I told him this on Twitter, put that, put another one of these guys down there too. Because I think there's some, yeah, you can see it pushing. So both of those ideas work for me, the push and the pull. But I, we all think in terms of pull mostly, including myself, for now. So it's like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So these little guys are chatting here. And this guy's complaint is he wants his money back, too, because he can't even get in. He's not in motion. That's right. He's not in motion. But once he gets in motion, he's going through there. He stays in motion. And then he peters out over here because he's not in motion. You know, this is a world where there's only one graviton, so he stops again. He's in the metaphysical world anyway. Um, so I know it's I know it's ridiculous looking, but it, it's uh, probably right. <laughs> uh, my mailing address for the Nobel Prize is on my website. Anyway, so we get down here. To, all right, well, and this it's speculative, etc. and so forth. But it's fun to think about, fun to talk about. And uh, so you know, I keep, just keep going and going, and because it eats at me, you know. And I'm, it, until it's over, it's, it's not over. So here we are. We have, in my twisted imagination, we have some straightened, four straightened in line, in the presence of mass, uh, what do you call it, the gravitons. And along comes a photon, very small photon, I might add. Well, what does that do? Well, it flips the gravitons because it's swimming right through them. Now that's that's my first um, a theory. Is it a theory? I don't know. Idea about this thing. I, they might it might a photon might swim through there and those things don't move. I don't know. The jury's out on that. But and you can see how it would fit right through there if you look at the spin two versus the spin uh, spin spin one photon. It's like the difference between swimming the Australian paddle or Australian crawl or doing the doggy paddle in place. You're swimming through 
because you're configured to swim through. A photon is configured to swim through. Mass is a mess. It's a dog paddling sinking. It's not configured to go anywhere. You'll stay in place. You see, uh, so that's, that's that. Anyway, I got it all the way down to this craziness of the vacuum. Because what's the vacuum? Well, I hear a lot about space, time, metrics, vacuums, blah, blah. That's something even smaller than one plank length. And you're thinking about grabbing that and pulling it and twisting it and engineering with it and all that stuff. That, to me, uh, you know, I'm, there may be a way. It's just beyond me. And I stop here. I stop here. That's for the next person to handle. Uh, but, but when it come, people say, well, these, these UFOs might be doing that. I'm like, anyone that can reach down into that level and tweak God by the nose hairs with a Milky Way sized scissors and get away with it, you're almost godlike. Almost. And you're not messing around with shaved apes on planet Earth. You're just, you're just not interested. I mean, that's a, that's a bold statement, maybe, but, and I don't like anthropomorphic aliens or anyone else or gods or whatever. But my money's on. That's not happening. Okay. Here we are. Pulling these ideas together. And all this, this is a moving, this is a little pump looking thing. It's pulling in the light through the black vanta black. It's guiding it through the pink and blue graphene wave guide into the graphene, which has a little H's on it, on the corner, one for each carbon. How perfect is that stuff? The light's absorbed, it's blown out, and it's as white as any Tic Tac. And what's it doing? It's also, you have your little pores on the skin there. They're adjustable. You run electricity and magnetism through there, so they so it will um, adjust. No, it will. They will move. They will move. Okay, just checking that. I thought I made a mistake, which would have been a disaster. They will move. They will pull it from this side and push it that way, depending on which way the guy wants to go. Is inside, whatever. Or the machine, it could be a robot, who knows. So that's something there. Here's something here next. So how do we do that? We make metamaterials that can do it. We already have some of it. We can do some of this. We can certainly think about it. It's free. It's already halfway off the ground where this guy, Kelly, has been thinking about it a little bit. He's not even, it's not even his job. What if you got some specialized people, got their head straight about what they're supposed to do? And, you know, product managers, man. That's what, you know, technical product managers, you know. Uh, at some point, yeah, going to raise money, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm old now. I'm not, I'm not a young super, uh, star wannabe either. So, but anyway, something like that'll happen. Private sector. I don't know. Uh, the idea's out there. It cannot be patented. It's all about the engineering. Boom. This is what I was looking for before. Flux for the buck. Not bang for the buck. That's over. Um, if you buy my line, which you don't know. Uh, okay. Let's not make too many assumptions. So, you know, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll, we can chit chat about super hydrophobic services and low gravity rebounds of large jets. All right. Doesn't that look like something we're all looking at? Probably does. Here's a graphene graphite disc that based free wideband terahertz. You stick that on your Ford Falcon, it'll flow through space. Okay. Very good. Uh, you know, stuff about more stuff. It's all there. It's fun.
Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and here's how we do it here again. That's what I'm trying to do is goad the Space Lab guys and everyone listening. Just to start, gets, you know, think along these lines and then this is an easy thing to do. I, I may just do it myself, but I'm just, I'm afraid of fires. I was in a fire once and it's not pretty, it's not big on explosions either. I was in one of those once in the World Trade Center, not the big one, the first one. You know, I just don't um, get a little antsy. So this is a bunch of stuff. Okay, fine. What else? Increase the window, hold up the graphene box again, and issue the challenge. I put it to you, Greg. Where is it? Big webcam. Bigger webcam. Biggest. Me only. Me only. I put it to you, Greg. Let's do this. All you guys and gals. Uh, let's go back to the thing now. And keep going. This is better than the last one I did. I'm more wide awake. Despite the cold, cold and rain. Okay, remember to shrink the window. Did I, do, I did do that. I did do that. Very good. Uh, yeah, I did do, I did do that. So, uh, yeah, we zap it, you know. If you want to do it at your lab up there, just call Teterboro and tell them uh, Zephram Coffrin's coming in from outer space on a time machine with a pointy-eared Vulcans to laugh at this first attempt. It's going to go down in history, too, by the way. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. So, and that sounds... Uh, you know, hubristic, but been at this for years. So you either will or you'll be forgotten. What's the difference? Who remembers who invented the wheel? Anybody? No. Fire? No. So forget about it. Over time. Let's just see what time it is, just for fun. Yes, this is longer than last time. But that's okay, because it's going to be a YouTube, and I'm on a roll here. Actually, I'm having fun almost. Because it's hard to talk to yourself in a room, for me at first. But let's go back to overtime. See, last time I finished in 40 minutes. And they like a one-hour thing there at APEC, a one-hour presentation. And... Because I didn't do that, I thought, well, okay, I'll talk about something else for 20 minutes. And it came in right at 102. But today I'm over, and I don't care. I'm going to talk about it again. Um, because it's only a practice, and it's going on YouTube, and people will watch it there. So here I am blabbing about the five observables. And... It's related to advanced propulsion because that's what we're seeing with these flying saucers or whatever they are, seagulls. We're seeing the five observables. And we all learned that from our friends at TTSA who put out that show. And we all make fun of them, myself included. It's easy to take shots at the guys taking a risk. And we do that. But here, we thank them profusely for coming up with these um, observables, which, you know, they probably came from some contractor who got paid $100 million to come up with it. And, you know, the government repeats it and adds a little. And, you know, whatever it is, here we are. And I would not have known about it if it were not for them. So it's, to me, that's very important because I'm looking at these things and I'm seeing, yeah, that matches this and that. And I'm making these little drawings and doodles. And uh, when I heard that, I'm like, oh, uh, huh. It's supposed to do that. 
What do you mean it made a hard right at 22,000 miles an hour? Of course it did. Which, you know, that's Looney Tune talk, but fortunately no one was around when I'm watching this. So, I felt compelled to throw in my two cents. It's the internet. And so what would I do? I wrote a little web page about what I mockingly call the five utterly predictables. Just to get attention, but also because well, it's true. Anyway, so I wrote this first opening paragraph, a little bit about light bubbles, and refer you to go read all that stuff. And I go over that. Yes, they're floating around with a little light pulse in and out here or there to stop and change speed. Because they are floating. The Earth is going, what, 67 miles an hour? They ride the clutch to go 22,000. They throw it in reverse to go left, go right. You know. and to them, it's like driving, you know, I, I think of it in terms of an autom or a manual shift. And an automatic, but sometimes, you know, and a motorcycle and a car. So, and I'm wrong about half those, by the way. But you're riding the clutch and the brake. That way you're never wrong if you say that. So, uh, they're floating around. And they give it a little gas or a little brake or put it in the, what, the one uh, analogy I do like is you throw it in park. Because what does that do for an automatic? It stops it. When they stop, they're going 67,000 miles an hour. See what I'm getting at? Anyway, so I have a little introduction about this there, and I go into this little spiel here about why physics didn't come up with this idea and how I came up with it briefly. There's a lot of snark in this, a little bit, because I'm trying to get to the point. And I'm tired of it. It's been dragging on for years, and I want to get, you know, progress while I can. So I get anxious with myself and everyone else. Anyway, I'm going to read part of this. Uh, I'm going to read this out loud. You are not going to pocket protector your way into this kind of breakthrough. Sorry, folks. I literally say sorry. If so, talented people would have done so already. The science is easy anyway, once it's reimagined in its essence, dumbed down to plain language like this, so it can be understood and recalled easily. When I dumb down, that's it right there. When I memorized that and kind of repeated, that's my mantra, because there's a lot of details to it, and it all flies out in and out to the side and around and of your mind. and you, you Just keep focused on this. That's it. That's the bottom line. Nature does it. Flying saucers do it. We can do it. It's new, but it's right. Anyway, so uh, where am I? Am I so dumb down to plain language like that little drawing there. So it can be understood and recalled efficiently. Hopefully people will, will remember that. Anyway, thinking about orders of magnitude covers most of, most of the math. You know how, anecdotally at least, isolated tribes don't fully grasp what 3 plus 4 is, but they know damn well it's more than 5. We're mostly at that point with powers of 10, like 10 to the minus 35, that's a Planck length, 10 to the positive 123, that's either, no, that's amount of particles including photons or excluding photons, I forgot. In the known universe, a huge number, huge. Biggest number that will ever come in handy in your life. So it's not fully grasped how continuous, yet discreetly, planked up time, infinitesimally weak, but unimaginably innumerable force carriers, gravitons, a gargantuan, slowly lumbering, woozy, wavy hydrogen atoms. You think of that as small and fast? That's a gigantic monster compared to half of the universe. Uh, titanic clumps of mountain range graphene molecules. Uh, yeah, mountain ranges. Unbelievably gigantic planet sized photons might interact within those relationships. So you have 
small things going fast, big things going slow, uh, medium-sized things going fast and slow, and they're all interacting, and some big things going fast, and some small things going slow, and things that are wildly disproportionate, you know, think about in daily life, even us here, this close to atoms and photons, don't really think about that that photon being 600 times bigger than that uh, atom it's going through and around. Um, that's when you can kind of almost get, get a bite on that and see, like, all right, so it's flowing in this stuff that's flowing. Because you look at air, you think that's like, well, that's solid. That's solid air right there. That's hydrogen or uh, nitrogen's packed in there. Yeah, not really, because there's gigantic, huge waves of 600 times bigger stuff going around it. But it's hard to visualize that. If I have a talent, it's that, visualizing things. Uh, and once I am okay at math, small, you know, uh, with the magnitudes. I like that. I enjoy that. So I must be good at it or have a talent at it or something. So that kind of stuff is what I can see, and that's went into this. Uh, equations, not so much. I could, you know, dig around and try to find something, but you're not going to find, you know, the, the thrust weight of a photon. Well, that would come in handy. Anyway, it doesn't exist. But better people than me will do this. They will figure that out and put it in writing so other people that believe in writing like that and understand it, I do not for the most part. I mean, I, I don't work with it. So, um, anyway, it, it will make sense. Did I finish reading that? Titanic clumps interact within those. The pieces are there, but the whole scenario isn't. If you're not making deals that amount to seven in life, they only trade in three and four. Three coconuts for two bananas. You know, uh, they don't go up to seven. Their number eight system ends there, and they get along fine. They're out in the jungle. If you need to come back tomorrow and get get four more, get them tomorrow, you know. Why the hell would you care about it? So that's why I figured out, I was like, yeah, you know what? That's why I did think of it, because no one the hell would care about it. I just happened to stumble on it because I was thinking about it. it it's useless in day-to-day -day life, maybe, but maybe not, so... You have to backfit the moving parts through the first time. So then you can calculate, in scare quotes, what a child can easily see. Now, a child can easily see it if it's explained. Calculating, I might have stretched a little there, though, that I calculated anything. I just see a big thing and a small thing and a fast thing and a slow thing and a combination of this, that, and the other thing. And then I look out the window and see gigantic hundreds of millions of tons of water hanging there that was yesterday in a puddle there, in the river over there, in a glacier over there, then, you know, I got to use my common sense here, reason, logic. One good thing about a legal education is it teaches you to ask why again and keep asking. That's the best part of what I got out of that that's applicable to this, may, may be the best part. Anyway, so let's go on to what I'm talking about here. And I was going to do a whole other uh, tube on this, on these, but I'm on a roll now. So maybe I'll do it again. Maybe this won't even be, I'll erase this somehow. It'll be a waste of time, but it's good practice. Sudden and instantaneous acceleration. Now, most people here know that. I'm getting tired, so I'm not going to read every word of all this stuff. Uh, 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 that's, okay, it's, it is what it is. These anticipated G-forces on materials may defy our current technology to manufacture. Well, I, I described that uh, previously on why we can do that. Um, starting now, why it's... Uh, I'm getting tired now. I think I'm going to pause and come back and finish this. So... Okay, I'm back after a short break, maybe 10 minutes. I just realized I've been sitting here for an hour and a half. I haven't moved. 
that's unusual. Plus the heat kicked on and I was, I was dressed a little too warmly. So, uh, plus I didn't have my two cups of cold coffee yet, which I usually have at this time of day. So, uh, I'm running out of gas here, but I'm going to finish these observables and, um, uh, well, I'll come back and hit them again sometime, but I started them. There's only five, so I'm going to briefly uh, try to hit them and get my second win here. Um, so here we go. Let's try it. Let's do it. We're at an hour and a half. It's way too much for APEC, but it'll be useful somehow. Good practice. I'll listen to it over and over again and uh, just keep practicing. So we're on the first observable. And I'll read it again. Sudden and instantaneous acceleration. Well, it's not accelerating for one thing. Uh, it's floating. We're accelerating. You know, we're moving through space. Uh, I think I went over that. We don't have to uh, <clears throat> bore you with repetition too much. Uh, but that's, that's one way to look, that's, that's the correct way to look at it, in my opinion. So, they say, well, I'm, I'm, I have to read it, I'm going to power my way through this. Objects moving in such a manner that they are capable of maneuvering suddenly, deliberately, and sometimes in the opposite direction. Yes. In some cases... These maneuvers involve a change in direction and acceleration that is well beyond the healthy limitations of any biological system that we are aware of to withstand. The anticipated efforts of these G-forces on material may even defy our ability to manufacture. I apologize if I read that before. Um, so, what would I say about it, Smart Alec? Gravity, inertia, and g-forces are mitigated by these objects with an overwhelming loss of mass equivalent. Yes, we mentioned that before here. Call it anti-gravity, inertial mass reduction, or whatever. You can even you can even start out by thinking about it as light for thrust and increased momentum. This is my imaginary chit chat with a guy spot in the bunker. They're secret, they're majestic, they're the private contractor. You know, I'm, I'm quite honestly, uh, I come down pretty conservatively on all this stuff in the world and life. And in national defense, I mean, that, that's what you're going to do, okay? We had a Cold War, I remember that. So I understand why they're doing this stuff. Uh, they have a lot of things to balance. But anyway, I'm making fun of them now. Uh, to make a point to the mob, which is how things are done. So, uh, I went through that stage two of thrust and momentum and, uh, you know, you're thinking, you're thinking the old way. I'm saying a biological entity should feel like you're sitting in a lazy boy chair watching the world go by literally, because that's probably what literally, factually, actually is happening. When you say opposite direction, I, you know, I start um, ah, uh, you know, I don't scoff at it, but it's like, oh, yeah, you guys are coming at it from the wrong way. And you're saying, well, we anticipate the uh, anticipations. Your anticipations are off. Uh, they're not interacting with the air and water in the first place. So you're not going to have G's. You're not going to have inertia. And, um, you know, air and water, you know, we mentioned this before, the light's moving through them. They're in the medium. Uh, light and air are what's in the medium. Uh, that is the medium, I'm sorry. They're pumping the medium. Um, outer space is pure medium. Terahertz radiation, an ocean of light. Uh, there's no need to interact with air or water. So if you read these things, it's me having an imaginary rant that the Joint Chiefs of Staff, or even above those top secrets. And I'm saying G-forces and force, and I write it a little arrogantly to get them to take me seriously, if that makes any sense. 
In other words, this is easy. You can do it. We can do it. An idiot out on the internet figured this out and is kind of mocking us, maybe, and telling us to drop the tough guy spittle spewing force attitude that comes with rockets and jets. And that's understandable, right? I get it. Believe me. Uh, but you have to get rid of that. And I, that's not easy. You have to, and in the end, I must admit, I love this pair, this little closing. You want to float like a butterfly or else you get stung by the bees. And you have to be a little older to maybe truly appreciate that statement because that man passed away and it was a perfect line and it's perfect here. And, um, you know, you guys with rockets and jets, you're not thinking about butterflies. All right. I, I understand. But you better start is what I'm saying. Uh, how to do that? Ugh, I don't know. Just keep looking at those. You have the secret. If you're the same guys, then you have the secret tapes and you're seeing this thing fly out of the ocean. You're seeing a tic tac running rings around your guys and gals. And, uh, you're wondering about it. Well, you know, maybe you, may, you better start thinking outside the, uh, butterfly box. Anyway, just trying to help there. That's all. Number two, hypersonic velocities without signatures. This one, I gotta admit it, it throw, you know, your hair might catch on fire, I think I say, in one of these pages. Because it's just, it is what it is. And it is the glowing cold aura, Nick West, <laughs> if you're listening. And it is the, the, you know, the ambient light fuzz. Of course it is. That's what it is. That's why it looks like what it is. Because that's what it is. The question is... How would a thing like that, which looks like nothing but an ambient light uh, fringe, that's not one of our signatures. Well, you don't know the signature. You go, what would a signature that had that, what would a thing that had that signature have to be doing to use that to run rings around us? Uh, you know, it's, I'm just trying to get people to think backwards and sideways, I guess. Um it's not easy. You're not going to come up with that in an engineering office because I worked on those. And believe me, all right, I know. So, uh, uh, yeah, you know, a goofball sitting on a park bench will figure that out for you, and that has been done. Is what I'm trying to say. Possibly has been done. So this this observable, we, we can't. You know, it's just so bass backwards that. Here's where I make a point. On the upside, this demonstrates how reason easily leaves science in the dust. Because a lot of you people are way smarter than me in the sciences, and the, they're working in this, and they're knocking yourself out. And, you know, I, I'm not disrespecting your efforts or your abilities or anything like that. But you have to be um, uh, different to make a breakthrough, some, you know, again, I'll go back to the rights and the Godards made fun of them and all these goofballs. Well, if I'm anything, I'm a goofball. Am I right? I don't know yet. We'll find out. Entertain it. But yes, it came about through reason, not science. Because, you know, I admit it, I get intimidated by these equations and things. But they're, they're not going anywhere anyway. I mean, they might go somewhere on paper so far. Uh, but then you come up with, uh, I'm a, and this is understandable, okay? I'm a physicist, not an engineer. You got to get some money out there to design these metamaterials. And there may be some way to interact with the, um, vacuum. Like I was kind of mocking that before, but there might be a way. Um, uh, you know, I haven't thought about it and other people can, you know, I'm not saying never say never with that at all. Uh, I'm saying this is our cheap, easy solution in the meantime, if that's possible, which, again, never say never. Um, anyway, but you're not going to figure that out with equations, at least not yet, not now, not today. 
And you're not going to build that meta material today, no matter how much money you throw at it, in my opinion. You can start thinking about it, though. You should start start kicking it around seriously. But so so then I start yelling at the guys in the bunker. What could possibly make one thing to the UF? So I do a little lecturing and hectoring because they're in there looking out for our best interest, trying to protect us. And if I can help them by making fun of them, uh, you know, maybe next time. Um, right here, I see a simple Google search can find me very easily. So, you know, just look for nutcases on the Internet. You might find something. Anyway, the underlying principle is not a secret and never was. So there's no, you're not going to get to jump on anybody, okay? Let's say my sick imagination you saw this two years ago, and you're like, you know what? That guy's right. Get on it. You can get on it, um, but you're never going to own it because it's an idea that a child can understand. You know, it's not. Uh, I took the IP courses and almost went into intellectual property. It's very interesting and fun kind of law, and uh, but you can't, uh, you know. You're not going to claim an underlying principle like this. You're just going to out-engineer the next guy. Uh, so, uh, the call is coming from inside the house, so you better wake up in there if you have not already. In either case, if there's a buck to be made out of it, the private sector is going to do it because everybody's going to want a self-leveling car. That's how it'll start out. The self-leveling car. You go. Now here I, I moved back to Pittsburgh. Well, Atlanta's like this too. But New York City is not. You know, it's very hilly here and windy. So you're in your car. Here, let's go. Let's go to the videotape. Let's go to the big screen just for one second. Where is it? You're in your car. You're going up a hill. You're going down a hill. You're going around. You're twisting. And, you know, you get seasick in a car. Now, you don't get that in a New York City cab, but you get something else. Ugh. What's that? Puke sickness. Uh, but it's but it's going down grids and they're flat, so it's different. Anyway, I said, imagine a self-leveling car. So you're going around like I just did there, woozy in, in my chair. But I'm flat. The bottom of the car is doing that, not the top. So... You know, you graduate to that, and then, I don't know, it's fun to think about how this will become, because it's not going to happen overnight. <laughs> That's built in. That's part of the big plan. Big, big planner's plan is uh, how this stuff doesn't happen too fast, because it can't. you got to work it out. And if these people are snooping around the, uh, what do you call it, the nuclear plants, yeah, they're going to snoop around and figure out that these somebody's going to figure this out, what we're doing. Not because we're here, but because they're going to anyway. But we're already here. So for what it's worth, these people could be our friends. These are kids in our age group. That's what That's what's happening, That you know, in my opinion, really. If they're aliens, because if you, you know you're manipulating space time, you don't care about about this. You have friends your own age, anyway. So we were talking about our reason Trump science. Yes, it does, and then did. Um, in my opinion. So our third observable is low observability. Well. Because it uses light, and we observe with light and radiation, radar, visible, infrared, it's going to be fuzzy. It's always going to be fuzzy. You know, I think it will always be that way if, if they want it to be. And we'll, you know, we'll do the same thing and be by accident unless we figure out how to do it because we, you know, the way we want to do it. And maybe at some point you will, because let's say you get R on another planet. You don't want to scare the hell out of people. You, you make your tic-tac blue, the precise blue of the sky that day. In other words, you pull it in the one side, right out the other. 
photon by photon. Well, not photon, almost to that level, but a pixel the size of a flipping uh, hydrogen atom, which is small. So, you got, yeah, the slow observability is a natural consequence. That's like saying if you're behind a, a car that's smoking and burning oil, I'm having low observability. Yeah, it's smoking and burning oil. So that's what these things are. You're going to have heat waves. You're going to have little rainbows of of uh, spectrum there. If you got your radar on, it's going to blast right back in your ears. Radio stations, TV, whatever's out there, they're they're riding on. Uh, it's like what's ever on the road, you drive over it. So. Um, that's why you're getting that stuff, <laughs> right? I mean, that's kind of self-explanatory. So, you know, uh, skeptic jokes about, what, you know, they're funny the first time. I think, was that Elon Musk that put one up? Like, why are they always f fuzzy? You know, ha, 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 the camera. You know, there's some jokes in there that are funny. But... The answer is, you know, sometime you want to get to the answer. That's your answer, in my opinion. Getting late, I'm a little, at least I'm getting my second win. Transmedium travel. Now, we went over that. Again, light is common to outer space. Most of outer space is light, with more light shining through it. It's cold light with other light shining through it. So you want to pump the light. That's the medium, the light. The light penetrates the what do you, the atmospheres of certain planets. Part of the atmosphere has uh, uh, nitrogen in it mostly. The other part has water in it. Those Some of these, I bet they come right in and don't even know the difference. You know, I could see that. Be like getting lost. Like the... Wait a minute, did that say city limits? Ugh. I think we went past it, dear. So that's what they do. All of a sudden, there's no people. It's all fish down there. Well, went too far. The sentient ones live up on the top. At least they think they are. So, transmedium travel. For this reason, there are stark differences. Oh, they're not different. Yeah, I mean... There are different, we get what you're saying, yeah. No, these are good observables. Uh, they're a little dated. Um, but yeah, if you're seeing this, imagine seeing this stuff in, in the 50s. I mean, <laughs> or the 70s, whatever. No one ever heard of metamaterials. They were called alloys and things. Or compounds. Uh, you know, optomechanical, was that even a word? When was that a word? I don't know. Um, so, but that's what, so, so these are understandable. So, um, so I'm not making fun of these guys, you know, I'm understanding what, you know, what do I say here? Yes. They are not in different environments. It's just that different stuff is in the environment. It's like a Disney World ride with the seawater around Maui there, the singing banjo bears over here, and the space mountains are dead ahead. But the rail you are riding on does not change. That rail is light, and it can go fast, too. And I stand by that, and I like that little closing. But yeah, you know how you're on those... Uh, Disney World rides and it feels like you're in the middle of the ocean because you're so cramped in there you can't see the rail the rail underneath you. The cars are jammed together. You can't, you know, they make it so it doesn't curve enough so you can see around the bend. You know, it's a little trick and it's fun. And the same with the outer space thing. And, uh, you know, Space Mountain. And what else what was the other one? The banjo bears. You know, they got your attention so much, so much distracting that uh, you don't even care. You don't notice. So, so that's the thing. You're on the rail. The rail is light. Rail goes right through the at the air, uh, and it goes right through the water. If they're good, 
you know, sometimes you hear, well, it, it, it appeared out of a mountain. Well, it might have done that visibly. If it really did that, then I'm, I'm very impressed by that. That's, you know, who, who, that's beyond even my wild imagination. Then, then you're dealing in plank length and things like that. I mean, if they're doing that and they're coming here, uh, it's probably an accident they're lost. <laughs> anyway, what the, all right, this stuff's repetitious to this talk. And we're closing in on five. I didn't think I'd make it. Anyway, positive lift. And I'm liking that word more and more. I hated it when I saw that. I'm like, lift is a thing that's, that's an old fashioned word that's used with gases and, and rudders. But that's the word. You want to focus on that word out of the, if you have to stick to the old stuff and slowly move off of it, and you got some crusty engineering head that won't do that, tell them they're going into the lift mode instead of the, you know, because that word's been around for a while, and that's something people can, old schoolers can understand. Um, but anyway, the, so what are we saying here? They're resisting the natural effects of Earth's gravity. No, they're not resisting it. They're not resisting. They're, they're, they're outwitting. They are smoothing, disentangling, flattening, straightening, mitigating is a favorite word for this. Mitigating. The gravity's there. It's having its natural effect. But the light that you're pumping around yourself and through yourself is also having its natural effect. Nothing unnatural is happening. You're just using the nature in a better way. And they're talking about thrust here and that, that other kind of lift. Uh, no obvious signs of propulsion. Well, there is obvious signs, but you don't think they are. That's fine. We know what you meant. But yet, they are able to move in a very precise manner in our atmosphere despite not having them. Yeah, they're more precise than you are. You are imprecise. You're a piece of your high-tech rockets and jets. That's a piece of dust in the wind with a plastic bag wrapped around a seagull discarded French fry bag. All right. So here I say, go back and read all my web pages, blah, blah. Cell phone. Yeah, I explained this. What's, you know, what, what's going on with the inertia and the gravity and the light? And I say something, you know, I don't have it all figured out about that stuff down to the last detail, but I'm getting closer. And I do think I'm thinking about it deeper than most people. And with an eye towards this, and also with an eye towards indisputable phenomena, non na in nature that you're not going to dispute for very long. And I suggest that you learn to move photons through your body and skin in a precise manner and put the lift and the ailerons into the hobby shop. And then you'll know what the signatures are because that's what it is. It's a jacked up balloon. It was right there all the time. You know, that's, that's what's, ha that's what's, that's how you could bottom line it for the headlines or something. I don't know. At one point I was calling it the extreme balloon because people like stuff that's extreme. Uh, you know, products. So, okay, I've had my say, I say here. And, uh, yeah, pass it on here because there's an army of engineers and, um, physics people that'll be all over this stuff, you know, while I'm trying to find my car keys, okay? Once it gets, once a general notion gets through, and I don't know how that happens exactly, but it'll be fun to watch, I'm sure. But it will, because it's right. It, it, the market forces of reality are here. 
And what you're going to do is, yeah, um, you're just going to refocus. I mean, just like you did with the airplanes and the rockets. Only this time it's the flux for the bucks. Gradient flux over mass density. And you're going to get into all this good stuff here. And you can play with equations and equations and look at, ooh, look at this fun stuff. And it really is. I wish I was young so I could go into it again. Again, it's a radiance versus a spectral radiance versus the flux density. And you're all going to compete, all the countries and all the companies for a while. We're going to compete and compete. And the Chinese have radiant exposure. Yeah, but we have spectral excitance is better. You know, like that. And then it'll be like that with the private enterprises. But you're not going to need too much, you know. Pretty soon you're going to see this is like like the nuclear weapons, you know, and nuclear power. It's good if it's harnessed usefully. And I worked in that business. But then again, you don't want to blow up planets. You've been watching these uh, missile uh, incursion YouTubes. And it's amazing. I'm like this. See this rocket? This is 10,000 times bigger than the, than the one that blew up Hiroshima. I think he said 100,000 times. And, you know, we got 100 of them out back. You know, <laughs> you know that's amazing. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I, I'm optimistic about all this stuff. So let's get that to that point. And that's why it's hard, because uh, if you could do it right away, evil lures would do it. But because it's complex, it takes a while to happen, and people get used to it. And you deal with it, and you have space treaties and alliances, you know. So hopefully we don't kill each other and aliens or get killed by them for, you know, being idiots first. Who you knows? Yeah. You know, that'll play out. And so in closing, uh, that's all self-promotional stuff. Uh, thank you very much. But, yeah, you gotta, you gotta get into this. First off, you gotta accept reality. That Kelly is right. Okay, just say it. Um, and I might not be, but if I am, and you're not saying it, you didn't say it. You weren't there. You weren't in on it. What do you know? You know, so just take a serious look at it. I think you'll find it's uh, it's idiot proof because you're looking at an idiot that came up with it by sitting on a bench. It was literally inspired by a instead of a red apple falling off a tree, it was a red balloon blowing across the road. Cloudy day. You know, uh, shoots of sunlight between the big Georgia clouds. The balloon's bobbling along, gets right into a shaft of sunlight, and shoots straight up into, you know, not outer space, but very far, very fast. And that's when I thought, and you couldn't make this cornball story up. That, well, you know, what goes up must come down, but, you know, the, uh, and I'm like, well, you know what? The light had something to do with that balloon going up there. And then I started remembering when I was a child, some, a story that happened about balloon. You know, my dad explained to me that the heat in the daytime made the balloon roll up the wall, but at night it comes back down because it's not warm. So, you know, the, he was an engineer, too. He's passed away. But um, this knowledge has been out there. It's just not... So I wondered about that as a kid. And, you know, all your life, it's in the back of your mind. <laughs> what is that? So I saw that and kind of got an answer. And that's going to... Uh, well, it took years. And now we're here. And it's going to come down to this. Let's go back to that little... Where is that? No, it's not there. There's a the little uh, image that goes with it. Uh, so, but yeah, that's it. If you want to get serious and rack your brain, start doing it on this.
But first, you have to buy the initial. I understand that, and I don't expect, uh, you know, <laughs> popular acceptance at all right away. But I'm patient, and I've been at it for a while, and you can't fool Mother Nature, and that's who's calling the shots on this. And uh, so you're not arguing. At some point, you're not arguing with me. And, uh, you know, I believe in, t in intelligent design of the universe by God and not Mother Nature. So you're going to be eventually arguing this with somebody a lot more knowledgeable than me. And you'll lose. So I think this is our next step. And there's a little guy there. I guess that's an old painting. And, well, I'll close with this. That I'm seeing this in nature elsewhere, okay? This Oumuamua, okay? That could be it. One. This could be a an object that's d displaying this ability. Either naturally, we don't know, whatever. That's a wild one. This... I'm pretty, you know, this is up there with the balloons and the clouds. This is nature. That's a morpho African swallowtail. Not all butterflies do this, but some of them have photonic crystals, light pumps in their wings, obviously, clearly. I don't think they're there for to show off for the mating ritual. Because they blow light around just like a big triangle from outer space, in my opinion. And if you dig into this stuff, you know, just like, you know, you, you copied birds, and whatever else we did, and fish and squids. This thing here, ultra black materials and photonic crystals combined in a thing that flies like a drunken sailor, floats around. Okay, I know how to end this perfectly. Where is that? And same with a hummingbird. That's a suspect. And here we go. Here's our perfect ending of the human beings and the tic-tac drivers and the butterflies and the aerospace engineers. And I'm the guy, I'm not filming this, but I'm on the bridge laughing at this. Oh, is the music? Oh, there's music to it, but it's not on here. Oh, well, maybe you can hear it. That is the flight of the bumblebee, I believe. Or, or uh, oh, it's one of those great classical pieces. Dun, 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 dun. <clears throat> or it's uh, something on the Rhine, whatever. Find that thing and listen to it. It's you know, find me on Twitter and ask me where is that thing. It's a million laughs to hear this music uh, with the, these fools chasing a butterfly, wondering what it is. It doesn't have thrust, Captain. I'm seeing no visible signs of aerial runs. Or there's no signatures. Look at that thing. You're telling me that's Newtonian? I don't think so. All right, with that outburst, I think I'm going to end. And uh, thanks for listening. It's too long for APEC, but I will see you all around somewhere. I'll see you around the playground. So now we're going to shut it down. And say good night, goodbye, and what's for dinner? Stop recording. Bye bye. Are you sure you want to stop it? I put that in. You don't have to do that, but I made it. Even